Well, I wanted to take a few minutes here to uh, talk about transportation. Uh, if you're going to live here long term in the Philippines, and even if you're just going to make, a, say, for instance, a two to three week visit, if you're going to be here for two, three weeks, of course, you're not going to go buying some transportation. Now, if you're going to be here, say, a month, it, it's worth your while to consider renting out a motorbike by the month. You can usually do that on average for anywhere from, uh, say, eighty to a hundred dollars U.S. You know, roughly about three to five thousand pesos. That way, if you're going to be here for a whole month, and you're generally going to be on one island, especially if you're going to be on Bohol, it's fantastic to be able to just jump up and go, go wherever you want, take night rides out in Panglao, take your own scenic ride through the rice fields, not through the rice fields, but the road through the rice fields. <laughs> out towards uh, Lobuk River. I mean, there's some really beautiful rides that you can take. I even just taking the highway along the coast, you can pull over at any time and go for a swim or whatever, take pictures. It it's great to have your own motorbike if you're, if you're gonna be here, you know, three, four weeks in one spot. Uh, a lot of people keep asking about the uh, driver's license. When you first arrive, whatever driver's license you have internationally is good in the Philippines for the first 90 days, first three months. If you're going to live here permanently, I did do a video a while ago on converting your license. You can go to the LTO, Land Transport Organization, I believe, uh, which is their version of the American DMV and with a little bit of paperwork and such usually in a day or two you can convert your international license and get a local philippine license you do still keep you retain your overseas license they don't take it uh, they just need to see it that you're actually a qualified driver so that's one consideration if you're going to be here short term is you can rent a bike and you know get about now another option is if you're going to live here full time if you're going to be in the city, you really have the option of not buying any any transportation. You don't need a car. You don't need a, uh, a motorbike. You can the bigger cities like say Cebu and even Tagbilaran and a lot of other uh, you know cities. You can get around easily enough. You could just never if you stayed in the city, you could just get by never owning a vehicle of any type because there's so many options. You've got everything from tricycles, hubble hubbles, uh, which is basically a motor scooter. And they got these pedicabs that the guys pet, you know, pedal. I, I don't use those very often because I'm kind of heavy and I feel bad for them going up a hill. There's tricycles, there's taxi cabs, V hires, which are these white vans. It's usually like uh, eh, anywhere from 25 to 45 pesos and they'll take you usually in a group of about 15 to 20 people depending how many they smash in uh, and then they'll just take you straight to the mall and you can get from the mall back to your your departing spot there's also ferries there's the series buses you have quite a few options in the city and even again in some of the smaller cities to, to get around with no problem at all you can do your grocery shopping you can do all this stuff uh, but if you're a bit more adventurous or you're living outside the city and you're living in a smaller barangay or whatever well then the consideration becomes greater to have your own wheels. So your, your two choices are essentially a two-wheeled vehicle, whether that be a scooter or a motorcycle. Uh, I'm not that coordinated and I have no background in bikes, so I got a uh, Honda Beat uh, scooter, which is automatic. It's only, I, apparently now I found this out, it's uh, I believe 110 or 120 cc. Uh, that's the actual size of the engine. And for me, a scooter is great automatic because I want to focus on the traffic. I also want to be able to work my way through the traffic. Here's the advantage. Again, in, in life and in many things, uh, there's a yin and a yang, a pro and a con, pluses and minuses with many things. And transportation is no exception. If you want to get a, a two-wheeled uh, motorbike, the advantage is you can work your way through the traffic. Uh, they're great on gas. I spend approximately well this is when I was living on the outskirts of Dumaguete now I'm out here uh, somewhere in Bacong I imagine my gas will go up a little bit but I was still when I was living on the outside of Dumaguete going in and out of town all the time getting groceries going to the movies going out to eat just regular everyday driving around I still only spent about 100 pesos a week in gas so we're talking maybe nine ten dollars a month in gasoline for my my scooter 
which is pretty darn good. And I imagine even now, living um, about two cities away from, from Dumaguete, at most, probably I'll spend $25 US dollars a month in, in petrol, gasoline. Now, so those are the advantages of having a, a two-wheeled bike. They're also easier to maintain. Um, if you get a flat, you know, you can just pull over the side of the road. There's vulcanizers everywhere. You know, really quickly. I've had it, I've done it like two, three times now. They'll just fix it right up. Again, maintenance is very light. For the price of the oil and then an extra uh, 40 pesos or so, they'll change the oil right then and there, right where they sell the oil. There's usually a guy in the parking lot who, you know, you give him 20, 40 pesos and he'll drain your oil, put in the new oil, and you're all good to go. So maintenance-wise, these are a lot of pros. Uh, the cons, however, is the, the safety issue. You know, when you're on a, a two-wheeled bike and you wipe out, obviously you're, you're going to get thrown, thrown clear. Uh, you know, and, and how you land and how you hit, how fast you're going, what hit you, uh, you know, those, those are all variables that don't look good when you're on a bike. So the, the safety issue, now if you're in town, believe it or not, I know you've maybe seen some of the videos I did in Dumaguete from the bike perspective. Believe it or not, all that craziness and everything, it's not as bad as it looks because you're only going about... 10 to 20 miles an hour. Now I know, you know, you could be going 10 miles an hour, flip over the handlebars and break your neck. I mean, you could do that falling down the stairs. However, I feel so much safer in thick, slow moving traffic, kind of weaving around, than I do on the open highway. On the open highway, you're sharing a two lane road. There are no four lane roads around here. I, I, maybe there's some out in Manila, some freeways and stuff, but out here it's, it's mostly been two lane roads. Now those two lane roads, they're not extra wide, they're just standard size two lanes. But you're sharing that road with sugarcane trucks, which when they're filled are just monstrous beasts. It may as well be a fast moving tank coming down the road. Um, and also you got the series buses, these big yellow caterpillar looking things that just do not slow down. They don't, they just don't seem to know where the brake is. And so they'll hit the horn really loud and as they come up behind you and that's your cue to get out of the way. They're not going to slow down. I mean, you just have to get out of the way and don't be surprised if it passes by your shoulder by about eight inches away. So it, it can be a little nerve wracking to be out on the open highways. Uh, so you better have, you know, some, some nerves of steel. I recommend if you're going to be riding a two-wheeled bike out in the open highway, have some experience. And if you have no experience, stick to the, the province roads, stick to in town until you really kind of get your bearings on how to handle your bike. And then you'll, you'll be a bit more prepared for the open highway. Four-wheeled vehicles, whether it be a truck or a car, a passenger car, the pros of those is that you can ride in any weather. So if it's raining, you can still go to the mall or whatever. Uh, when you're getting groceries, you can pack in a bunch of stuff. Also, when you're getting ready to move, uh, the advantage is you got your own truck and you can just pack it up and, and you know ride it to the other side of the island if you want. You know, stay in a hotel, come back, get another trip, you can do that. So there's some advantages there. Safety-wise, also, if you get into a, a little bump or whatever, you know, a little small accident, you know, you're in a car, you got seat belts and whatever, you know, so you're going to be doing okay. Uh, unless you, you interact with a series bus or a sugarcane truck, then, you know, it's just, unless you're in another sugarcane truck, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be much of a contest. Now, I will make one interjection here. If you're going to get a four-wheel vehicle, I would really love to start a campaign. Because when you buy it, now aside from the jeepneys and the taxis who have wised up to this, most, I would say probably 90% of the private passenger vehicles that are privately owned, privately used, have the front windshield tinted dark. Of the privately owned vehicles that I see here have the front windshield tinted dark. Like you can't even see in the car. So uh, I guess they do it because they think it's going to make the car cooler or whatever. Well, if you have all the other windows tinted, yeah, that'll help with the coolness factor. Crack the window a little bit and you're good. But having that front windshield tinted, I don't know why, but it hasn't caught on here yet that if you do that at nighttime, you can't see anything out of that car as you're driving down the road. If it doesn't have a light on it, you don't see it. You don't see pedestrians a lot. I would say probably five to 10% of the motorcycles on the road at night have no lights 
no lights, no headlight, no tail light, no turning light, just no lights. And they're out on the road. And you add, they're hard enough to see with a clear windshield. So if you have, uh, you buy the car, it's almost guaranteed going to come to you with a darkened front windshield. You try driving that at night, and if there's a motorcycle with no lights or a pedestrian or a dog crossing the road, almost guaranteed you're not going to see it. Another problem it causes is that the people who drive these cars, in order to see anything, they drive around with the, the, the high beams on 100% of the time. So if it's dark, they got the high beams on. You know, when I first got here, I would flash them and I would think they'd get the clue and lower their high beams. They're not going to lower those high beams for nothing because without it, they can't see anything. Well, the simple solution, of course, is get rid of the tint on the front windshield. It's a safety hazard. In fact, in the United States, there's laws that you cannot tint the front windshield. At least I know it's that way in California. Um, I imagine it's that way in many of the other states, if not all of them. And it's for that safety reason. You cannot see driving at night with a tinted windshield. For some reason, again, that, just, that concept has not caught on here. So if you do get a four-wheeled vehicle, get rid of that, that front dark tent. Don't get used to it. Just have somebody strip that off. They can use chemicals and strip it off. And tell people, hey, I'm taking this, this front windshield tint off, and here's why. It's a safety issue. You don't want to go plowing into some old woman crossing the road at night. You just don't want to do that. So uh, that's my plea. If you're going to get a vehicle, is, is take care of that issue. Now, the downside, as far as getting a four-wheeled vehicle, is uh, maintenance is a little bit more complicated. Of course, you know, a car's a bit more, got a bit more moving parts than a motorcycle. As far as parts, um, a lot of these cars here, I don't see too many what I would call name brand vehicles. You do see some Toyotas, and I'm talking about outside of Manila and Cebu. Because over there, you'll see just about everything. In fact, one buddy, one buddy of mine said he saw, I think it was a Lamborghini out in Manila in Makati. But in general, on the other islands, you know, you're going to see maybe a Toyota once in a while, uh, maybe a Honda. But all these other brand cars, I've never heard of them before. Yamutu or whatever. It's just some, it's just some name I never heard. And these are a lot of cars that are made in South Korea or they're brought in from Japan. And the parts are generally available depending on what make model you get. Now the downside is, aside from maintenance and all that, changing a flat tire could be a little bit more problematic. With a bike, you know, you just pop it up on its own self jack, you're fine. Uh, you know, so make sure you have a spare, make sure you have a, a jack. Here's the other thing to consider. There's an old saying in the U.S. anyway, uh, as long as you have a truck, you always have friends. So um, if you have a truck, expect that, you know, your, your buddies are going to say, hey, I'm moving, can I borrow your truck? Uh, I would say just rent it to them. Rent it to them for five, six hundred pesos and let them deal with it. Otherwise, you're going to be driving around, moving people's stuff. You know, you're going to be, you're going to be running a moving company. <laughs> so um, if you have a truck, just expect, you know, people, very few people have trucks. So they're going to want to borrow the, borrow the truck to, to move around. Uh, so that's one other thing. But again, the great thing is that for long trips, a four-wheeled vehicle is fantastic. You feel safer. You can rest, you can go further than you could on a bike. You, you know, if you've ridden a bike for more than, say, two hours, three hours, you get kind of tired. You want to get off and stretch your arms and give your arms a break and all that. In a car, you can go much further. Here's the, another downside about having a four-wheel vehicle. You're going to be uh, just hating traffic. Just to even get from one side of Dumaguete to another or trying to push your way through Manila or any of that. You can't pass. Forget about passing. In, in, in heavy inner city traffic, you're not going to be able to pass. There's always going to be, if there's more than, say, five, eight feet available, there's going to be a tricycle there. And it's going to be the slowest thing on the road. Whatever the slowest tricycle is in front of you, that's the fastest you're ever going to go in traffic. So you're always, always going to be bottlenecked behind the slowest tricycle on the road. Whereas, like I said, with a bike, eh, you just go over to the side, or like what I do, go on the sidewalk or go into the oncoming traffic, and you, you, you skirt in, you skirt out, and you keep moving, you, you, you cut through that. When you're in a vehicle, uh, a four-wheel vehicle, you, you lose that option. So if you're going to be riding uh, short-term into town, you know, really the best solution, have a scooter motorcycle for going in and out of town, and have a vehicle for, for long-distance stuff. 
So there's some of the pros and cons about uh, a two-wheel vehicle versus four wheels. Uh, safety issues, things to consider. If there's anything I forgot, uh, just feel free to put that in the comments section or your experiences, what you found useful, whether you're living out fur further in the province versus living in the city. Um, you know, again, I'd like, I'd like to hear from you.